So actually when you signed the agreement, you signed the ticket, you want to be signing the ticket without prejudice and putting your name there. And by by col colon your name as authorized representative or just by your name because the ticket is actually being given to your straw man, the all caps name, John Doe in all caps. It's not being given to you. You look on the ticket, it'll be the all caps name. When you get anything in the mail from the court, it'll be addressed to the all caps name. It's not addressed to you, the sovereign flesh and blood person. It's addressed to the corporation that you are using. Therefore, when you sign your name, you sign without prejudice, which reserves all your rights. If you sign UD under duress after your name, what you're stating is that somebody had a gun to your head when you signed, which is... UTD under threat and duress. UT, yeah. Under UTD if you want. UTD, or but UD is UD fine. Is fine. Yeah. U backslash D under duress. And if somebody asks you later, hey, that's what it meant when I signed it. UD meant under duress. The man, uh, don't think for one second that there is going to be situations if you do write that where a cop will go, what's this? You have to write your signature as it appears on your driver's license or whatever. So there are different arguments you can get in and we can cover that later, but I want to throw that in there. But anyway, the man who's pulling you over has not identified himself. That's right. And when you ask him to identify himself, he'll point to his badge, which you can't read, and he knows that. It's by law, he has to give you his business card. And he three forms of ID has to give you the badge, the business card, and an ID, an identification card. So in any, in any case, if he didn't have the gun and if he wasn't threatening you, you wouldn't sign your name to that ticket. So I want you to consider from now on, if you sign your name with a qualifier, which under the UCC it states... That's the Uniform Commercial Code. If you, Uniform Commercial Code governs all commercial ac actions. So if you state that you have a qualifier, just stating it in verbal, if the policeman refuses to let you put something on there, just stating at the side of the road that I'm reserving all my rights is enough to reserve your rights. Now, what does that do? Ever look at a ticket before? What's the bottom of the ticket say? It says, I, under penalty of perjury, promise to appear. So you're signing something that you can't get out of. It's not like, hey, I don't believe I did this. You can argue about whether you did it or not, but if you don't appear, it's a default judgment. You didn't appear, you're guilty. It's a type of dishonor. It's a dishonor. So if you write without prejudice or under duress, you have voided your promise to appear, and they cannot issue you a, a failure to appear because you didn't fail to appear. You never promised to appear in the first place. Also, I'd like to point out that on the ticket it, it says violator's copy, which is more evidence of what we were talking about earlier, that um, it is an admiralty court guilty till proven innocent because they're giving you a fiduciary instrument that states that you're a violator and that you're in violation. <coughs> and uh, they're going to take that fiduciary instrument uh, that they've uh, coerced you violently into putting your name upon, uh, and they're going to make money with it. They're going to generate money out of thin air and uh, do something that I've heard called double booking. I know there's other names for it, but it, it, is, a, it is a type of unlawful activity. And certainly it's without your permission, and you're not supposed to really even be getting stopped. Whether you're walking or, tra or traveling in your automobile, they're not supposed to be stopping you with, with one of two things. A lawful warrant or your permission. Or probable cause. Yeah, or, or some if, kind if of they, viable probable cause. If they cause, witness right. you harming your fellow man, yeah, of course. then of course. they can pull you over. But, but a violation of a code, you know, oh, that guy's taillight's cracked. You know, I mean, come on. Now, so that's, that's the first point. At the traffic stop, you're going to sign it correctly. Sign your ticket correctly. And, that, and then when you get home, you have, under the UCC, you have three days to challenge any contract that you enter into. The traffic ticket's a contract. So you're going to write, refused for cause, uh, per UCC 1-308, and you are going to send it into the court system and you're going to have somebody else send it in with a proof of service stating that they put it in an envelope and they mailed it. And what is the proof of service? The proof of service is you have a witness 
that you could call into court to testify on your behalf that you know you aren't to be trusted so therefore a proof of service is basically a guarantee that somebody mailed the letter off if you have a proof of service along with a certified mail stamp you can pretty much state that the other party is not getting out of the fact that somebody served them something yeah they can't say I didn't get that so you refused for cause the ticket then you're gonna send them a letter stating that you know you didn't do anything wrong under the Constitution of California and under the Constitution of the United States you haven't injured anybody this is a victimless crime and the only thing you're guilty of is uh, abusing a code which is color of law not law there's a difference between law which is common law where somebody actually has to be physically injured and color of law which is anything that a group you know that's a maximum of law when you're talking about color of law you're talking about legal you're talking about somebody somewhere some group of land pirates or whatever got together and wrote it up and said you can do this you can't do that and and what ordains that we do we wrote it down and if you don't do what we say uh, lock and load you know, point a gun to your head you better do it or else we'll kill you you know so then you went into court and you sat in front of the judge and you watched that episode with Sam I am and what was the judge's purpose that day there's only one purpose he has and that is to get you to consent to that contract and how does he get your consent by you pleading guilty not guilty it doesn't matter what you plead the fact is is you're saying I'm going to play with you I'm going to volunteer I, I, under your power I'll, I will let you have authority over me I'm not refusing to play with you and I'm I'm actually acknowledging that you have authority over me what's another word for authority control and another word for that is jurisdiction the fact is, is the courts don't have any jurisdiction over you and if you challenge their jurisdiction and say what jurisdiction you know what evidence do you have that you have jurisdiction over me they will continually tell you that their robe is their jurisdiction the gun on the bailiff is the jurisdiction the fact that you are a, a citizen in society is their jurisdiction whatever but the fact is they don't have any jurisdiction over you and Sam could have challenged them on jurisdiction and he would have gotten the same results I the, think that's where he was trying to go but uh, well he, he should he should have they, brought it up he should have just stated out that you know I don't believe you have jurisdiction over me and I don't believe any evidence to the contrary exists if you can't show me any evidence that you have jurisdiction over me then I'm free to go what would that then the balls in the judge's court he has to answer the question if he refuses to answer the question it's like I didn't hear an answer to my previous question dishonor. right so he wants to get you to plead and it doesn't matter what the plead is yeah, what, you, you could plead uh, not guilty no contest innocent <laughs> There is no, they don't have innocent as a plea, and they'll argue that. But I mean, even if you say I plead something that they don't have listed for you to plead, like innocent, that still is. Oh, great! You volunteered into my jurisdiction. You know, now I now there's other things I can do to you. Thank you for coming and playing with me. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for coming and playing with me. So there's, there's only one thing you can do, and let's let's talk about honor and dishonor. In court, everything's about honor and dishonor. Uh, if you're in the military, the commanding officer is never wrong. Can't be wrong, he's a man of honor. And men of honor don't lie. Therefore, whatever he charges you with is the truth, and you're guilty. So, <clears throat> let's, let's, likes to be called your honor. let's look at that from the standpoint of honor and dishonor. You've been charged with a violation you can agree that I'm guilty or you can argue about it and say I'm not guilty I didn't do it but you can't prove a negative negative. and not guilty doesn't mean I didn't do it it means you, I did it I don't feel guilty you can't prove that you didn't do something you can only prove that you did do something hey I painted the house but hey I didn't paint the house uh, how do you prove that is that possible see you can't prove you didn't do something Oh, I didn't shoot him. I was nowhere near there at the time. The what better evidence is there? The better approach <laughs> is to conditionally accept the charge based on proof that it's true. 